ClassBank and Raffle is a Google Sheets add-on and you can find it, the instructions for it in addition to this video by going to classbankraffle.com and that'll actually take you to this blog post entry on my Paperless Mojo blog that explains the process of how it works and what you can do with it. You can see some screenshots of it here and this is the basic process that I'm going to set up and take you through right now. All you need for this um, is Google Drive and a ClassDojo account. You need a Google account and a ClassDojo account. And uh, the reason I created this is because I've been using ClassDojo for quite a few years, uh, basically ever since it came out, and it's been very useful. But this year, I really wanted to use it as an incentive and a class currency tool for being able to spend points to evolve Pokemon in my Pokemath game, to allow kids an alternate route to getting the Pokemon, even if they're stuck on some of the math, so they can get it through good behaviors and perseverance and positive attitude, which Jesse and James don't necessarily always exhibit. Now... These are characters from Pokemon, by the way, from the TV show. So these are just examples. Now, um, to do this, there's a couple little setup steps. And the first thing you're going to need to do is in your Google Drive, you probably want to make a new folder for this, for your files, just because um, there's no third-party sharing. Nobody can access the data in your class bank or your class dojo file that you download, except for you, unless it's in a shared Google Drive folder. So the people who can access your Google Drive can access your files. That's it. The app doesn't send that information to anybody else. So that's why I'm going to make a new folder just as a good practice to make sure that it's just a folder for me, not a shared one that somebody else can mess up or see or get into. See, there's no little figure icon there. It's not shared with anybody. It's just my own folder. I'll go into that and I need to create a new blank sheet, a new Google Sheet. And this is going to be where we store our points in our class bank. You can name it whatever you want. I'll just call mine Class Bank 2016-2017, uh, so I know which year it goes for. Maybe I want to save the ones for each year to see what balance my students had. I don't know. And you should be able to do this with multiple classes down at the bottom, multiple sheets. You can rename the sheets if you want to your class name. So if you had multiple classes, you could call it Period 1, Period 2, or just the name of the teacher or whatever. Um, I'm just going to set mine up with my, my class. Actually, I'll rename it. Mine is the first period, so I'll call it period one. It doesn't really matter what you name these tabs. This is just to organize it if you have multiple classes you want to set up banks for. Now, the first step is to import the data from Class Dojo. This is the only thing that takes a couple of steps, unfortunately, because it's just not integrated yet into Class Dojo itself. But fortunately, they have a tool where you can export reports and download them. So we're going to take the report from Class Dojo and put it into Google Drive, and then the application will work, the Google script will work. I click on view reports up here for my class and right now it's just for this week I haven't done anything with points this week so I'm going to give a longer range. Let's say uh, all time for this one. And there's all the points for all time and there's a little button here that says view spreadsheet. What that will do is it will let you download a comma separated values, a CSV file. You can see one I already downloaded down there. So what that does is it downloads basically the spreadsheet data. Up here you could rename it if you want. It's a very long name that includes the, the date range that is being exported. So I'll leave it as it is for now. And I downloaded that into the, into the folder. If you have Google Drive installed on your computer, you can actually download it directly into that Google Drive folder and it will sync automatically. So that actually saves a step if you do have Drive installed. But I'm going to show you in this case what it looks like without Google Drive installed. Okay, so now I need to get it into the folder. So there's a couple ways to do it. I can drag and drop it in there, but there's a special setting that makes this a little faster every time you do it. And every time you want the points to update to, to sync up with Class Dojo, you'll need to re-download and re-upload the data so that it can sync up and be up to date. So I'm gonna do this every time I have a, a point spending day, I'm going to update the values this way. If you go to settings for your Google Drive with the little gear icon, there's a, a handy little button here called Convert Uploads. What that does is it'll take non-Google Drive files and convert them into Google Drive files. For example, this is a CSV file, comma separated values. Let me show you what it looks like if you do not have that checked and you upload it. It will put it in your Google Drive, but notice it's not a green sheet icon. So this can't be read as a Google Sheet. It can't read or edit the data right now, which is a problem. You can look at it and see the data but you can't do anything with it. So if you want this to be editable and usable for this app, you'd have to click this green open button and that means it's going to open it as a Google Sheet. So it, it will still work if you upload it from there and then open it. What you'll see is that it's created 
uh, a Google Sheets format of it in that same folder. Now let me remove those and show you the faster way is to turn on automatically convert uploads and then when you upload it you won't have to do that extra step. Okay, so it's a good idea to do. Now it's in there. So all we have to do is put it in Google Drive. Next step is we're going to make sure we have our add-on installed. Now if you don't have the add-on yet, you can choose Get Add-ons and do a search for it. It's probably the fastest way. Class Bank is I'm going to search for. And you'll see it show up there. Now I already have it in here, otherwise I'd have to click the free button. And it might ask you for permissions. Again, as I said, it doesn't actually share any data or, um, or even delete or manipulate any of your data other than on this new blank sheet you made. It will, it will copy the information from your Class Dojo data into this sheet. Um, so it doesn't share with any third parties or anything like that. You just have to give it permission so that it can transfer the data from the Class Dojo sheet into this one. Now I'm going to use the Class Bank and Raffle add-on. I have multiple add-ons automatically installed here, clearly. Um, and we're going to import points. The first time you do it, you have to import points from your Class Dojo file, which is the only format supported right now. To locate that file, you click in number one, you click the Locate File button, and it should be the newest one uploaded, but if you already uploaded it a while ago, you might have to search for it, and this is where naming them can come in handy. I'm gonna click on it and click Select. Now the name of the file is right there. Right now, it's defaulting to add to existing points, but I don't have any existing points, so I wanna go ahead and reset this. Um, the first time you do it, you wanna choose Reset, and every time you want your point balance for the banks to go back to zero, you would use this Reset button. Adding to existing points is something that I don't plan to use this year, but I know some teachers do it this way. They have smaller chunks that they download the data for, and they want to add those points to what was already there previously. What I'm going to use most often this year is replacing uh, the existing points from Class Dojo with the new total points whenever I download them. Whenever we want to do a new um, store or raffle or auction or something, I'll need to re-download that data from Class Dojo to sync it up. So I'm going to update the accounts, and what I'll do is I'll process for a few moments here, and then it says update successful. And there's a little delay, but there's all my data from Class Dojo. You'll see it syncs up. Okay, the positive and negatives. This is showing a point total value balance left over, and so you can see it matches up right there with the third column. Now these students haven't spent any points yet, so their total is their balance. From this point on, you can do spending as much as you want. You can do raffles as much as you want. The only thing this app won't do is it won't update these values when you update Class Dojo. You'll have to download the file again, upload it, and then import it back in. And choose Reset if you want the points, the points spent to go back to zero. You would choose Reset or you would choose Replace if you want the points spent to stay there but the new Class Dojo values to show up. And if you want the new Class Dojo values to be added to what was already there, you choose Add to Existing Points. I'm going to cancel out of that because I just imported it. Now I can do things like, let's say I want to do a raffle. It's pretty simple. You go to the raffle picker, and you can either choose based on how many points they have left in their balance or their total points. These are two different things. The points left over is how much they have left after they've spent and perhaps bought things. And you can choose how many winners you want to pick. If you pick more than uh, the number available, then it will it might say undefined and it'll tell you some names aren't possible. Okay. There's also an option to limit one prize per student because right now as you can see uh, Ash has 14 points. That means he has 14 tickets in the raffle. He could win every single prize theoretically. So I like to limit it to one per student but it gives a higher chance of the first student getting the best prize. Okay. So if I wanted to pick let's say I don't know five students or there's only five here. Let's just pick two students and see who wins. It'll be based on total points. I'll limit to one per student. I'll pick winners. There's only three here that I could possibly choose from because the other ones have negative points. So they won't have any tickets at all if they're zero or negative. So in this case, Ash did not win. There was a total upset. The person with only two tickets won. And believe it or not, the math is still correct. That just happened to happen. And that's why I like doing the raffle, because kids can uh, be excited about it and realize they have a chance, even if they don't have the most points. As long as they have some points, they can still have a chance to win. Now, the third option here is spending points. And if you go to spend points, you can select everybody or you can select some subset of people. Now, I remember 
that Meowth had only 2 and Ash had 14, Pikachu had 9 or 10, James had negative points. So when I try to spend points here, you can choose pretty much any positive value. Um, let's just say I want to spend one point for a prize or for an auction item. Now when I click to spend the points, it will deduct the values, but it will also tell me if a student didn't have enough points to spend. So in this case, James's balance was negative, so it didn't deduct the points, and it let me know that he didn't have enough to spend. So that way, if you're giving out prizes or stickers or whatever based on points, um, you want to run that first just to make sure you didn't make a mistake. And this way, you don't have to double check everybody's balance. It'll just do it for you and let you know if they don't have enough in there. And now, it'll pop back up automatically because a lot of times when people are doing a store or an auction, they're going to want to repeat the process with different prizes. And that's why it defaults to popping back open. You can close it with this button or the X in the corner if you're finished. If you want to do another draw, maybe everybody wants to spend three points on a bigger prize. I try it, but now several people don't have enough. James, Jesse, and Meowth did not spend any points because they didn't have enough in their balance. The only person who did was Ash and Pikachu. Actually, two of them did. So it deducted the, the extra three points, and now their point balance here is remaining. So you can do this over and over again repeatedly, but if you want the most up-to-date values from Class Dojo, You'll have to repeat that download process and then either upload it into Google Drive or make sure you download it into the Google Drive app folder that's installed on your computer to get it to sync up. Um, if there are any questions, uh, refer to this document here, which breaks it down step by step in a written and picture format, just what I showed in this video. And uh, there'll be maybe a few updates along the way to, to improve upon this as necessary, but it should work as it is.